<laughs> so today I would like to make a change to some things that we have already done, but I think could be done a little more fancily, and I'll show you what I mean. Now, currently we have our little fellow here, and when he grabs the key, that's very loud, when he grabs the key and goes through, we just fade out and fade back in. Now that's absolutely fine. We can do that, it's not a problem. Easily done, wonderful, beautiful, phenomenal. But what I think I want to do is I want a circle. So I want, basically, I want a circle to start where the door is and expand out until it covers the screen. We load the game and then the circle comes back in and we see the new level. Make sense? Hopefully. Okay. What I want to do first is to, is to create said circle. And now I'm going to say... Let's maintain aspect ratio here. I want a 128 by 128. Oh my. Come, come, come now. 128 by 128 size. Okay. And I'm just going to make a regular circle here. Um, we'll go here. And we'll begin... No, that's not a circle. <laughs> oh, you see, there's the circle. Oh boy, yes. It actually could be any shape, really. And that's another problem that we have. I do not want it to be anti-aliased. I want it to be completely this color. Okay, here's our circle. So I'm going to flood fill it. And then I'm going to turn it to white. So this is our circle. And I will save it in our graphics. And it's just going to be called circle. All right. Let's return. And we've already set up all the imports so that uh, it will import and it will not uh, do any map maps or fi the filtering is off, in other words. So then all I want to do is come into my game scene and then just pull that dry best circle in. So here it is. I'm going to make it invisible and we'll change the color. I left the color white so we can change the color to whatever we want, whenever we want. But I think we'll do black for now and I also want the Z index to be higher than anything else on the screen so that it covers everything. Okay, so now we have our circle. Now what we want to do, uh, and it's invisible, which is good. Uh, so when we go to the next level, currently, as you see here, we are modulating our, uh, our fade, our fader, basically our uh, background, our fader thing. Uh, but what we'll do instead is, uh, let's actually, let's comment that out because, you know, we may want to, uh, you know, I don't know, do something else with that later or add it back or something of that nature. So, uh, basically what we want to do here instead is we want, we want to operate on our circle. So we're just going to, we're going to set the source of our property inter interpolation as a circle. And simply, we're going to play with the scale of this circle. So what we'll do first is we'll start the scale out at zero. Zeta. And then we want to go to, I'm going to guess, uh, let's just do 5x, because uh, 128 times 5 is, I don't know, 1,000, 1,100, something like that. And that's way bigger than our... Than our, uh, than our viewport resolution, so it should be fine. And then here, we will do, we'll start at our circle.scale, and then we want to fade out to a vector 2.0. So we want to go back to zero. And additionally, uh, I just want to show you guys this. I think I've shown this before uh, in some of the other videos, but there is a website that is a beautiful thing. It's called easings.net, and it's an easing functions cheat sheet. So that way you can mouse over these things and you can see what they do and how they do. So I have cubic set up here and right now ease out for the circle getting larger, but I don't think that's correct. So let's look at the cubic. Uh, ease out cubic is that. I think it probably should be ease in cubic. So the circle, in other words, the circle will, will slowly get larger and then it will get larger quicker as the time gets closer to finished. So I wanna, basically I wanna switch these two things. So when, it fa when, it, when the circle gets larger, it starts out slowly. And then when, this, when we fade back or when we make the circle smaller after we've loaded the level, I think I want this ease out cubic instead of the ease in. So we'll just, and actually I, I know that I do because I, 
know, it having an opposite doesn't, it just wouldn't work very well. And uh, additionally, what we want to do is we want to, um, we want to position the circle. So I want the circle to be, I want the circle uh, position to be equal to the, the current, uh, the current level's door position. So we'll do it that, do that. And then I also want to, we can't forget to make the circle visible here. And then also after we're done, we want to make the circle invisible. And then um, when we pull the circle back in, uh, I think it's probably best to have it come in at the center of the screen. And in order to get the center of the screen, let's just go ahead and store, store the uh, size of the viewport up here. Because we'll use viewport size and not the actual size of the screen. Um, since that, that's what we need to use, we need to work in viewport size coordinates. So that could be different depending on the size of the window. The way we have set up is that it will stretch. But we just want to deal with uh, the viewport size coordinates. And that would be, we'll just look at this real quick. That would be uh, these coordinates right here. So there's your actual viewport size. And, you know, we did tell it to, to, uh, to stretch that in the 2D uh, for, for 2D. So the viewport size remains the same, but it basically just scales it all. But the the uh, the coordinates are the, going to be the same size-wise. So what we want to do then is we'll do it in start already. I'm sorry. We'll say viewport size equals get viewport. We want the rectangle. And we want the size of that rectangle. Just like that. And then when we bring, after we've loaded the level, we want to reposition, reposition the circle to the viewport size divided by two. Because remember our circle is in the middle. The origin is in the middle of the circle because our offset, we have set it to be centered. So that if we put, the, put it in the center of the viewport, that's going to be viewport size divided by two. And then it should scale back up and we should see what we have. So let's see, what, let's see if I've made any mistakes. Let's see what I'm talking about here. Yep, so our circle comes out and comes back in. It's really fast. So let's do a couple of things. I want to make this fade time since we're using it. Let's make it make it three quarters of a second. And then let's also add an additional tiny little delay of about a quarter of a second after we've loaded the level before we pull this pull the, the circle. Uh, back out. So let's look and see what that does. Yeah, you see it kind of just gives you a little bit more time to just sit there. Okay, so cool. Okay, one other thing that I want to address and that is right here. So you see this check if level actually exists. So we need to kind of do this in preparation for anything that we may want to do for in-game stuff. So I'm going to do that and you see here I'm loading this and then I'm doing an instance of it. Well, if this doesn't exist, and I try to instance that, I'm going to get an error. So let's separate these two things out. I'm going to call this level scene. And we'll do, we'll load the level scene, because it's a packed scene, basically. And then I will take that level scene and instance it here. But that allows me to say, if that level scene is not equal to null, then we will do all of this stuff. Otherwise... Uh, we'll return false, and let's go ahead and print. Uh, we'll say percent %s does not exist, and then we'll just give us a to-do that says in-game or something. Um, and then for that parameter, we will actually use this because this level path actually is a... Um, it has uh, some formatting in it already, so we need to give it the level number for that, and that's actually going to be uh, yeah. I think that's correct. Let's try that real quick. Oh wait, I can't. That's the other thing. Uh, let's add a couple of things to this level. Um, I want to need to add a door. And let's add a key just so we can so we can get back where we need to go, right? So we'll save that. And let's uh let's go ahead and run through it uh, and hopefully everything will work correctly. We'll check it and see.
Ba boom And I'll drop down here. Grab the key. Enable those blocks. Climb up here. And we should get... Yeah, right here. Level 3 scene does not exist. Do win game. That's exactly what we want. Okay, wonderful. And really... Uh, where we would do this would be under this load level. So this would be, we could add a to-do here. Uh, we could say to-do, check return value of load level. To determine if there are, in fact, any more levels left. All right. So that's... I think that's it for today. I think that's a good place to start, stop. I, I really, again, think that this adds a little bit to the spiciness of the game, if you will. Um, and that's really what I wanted to accomplish for this particular video, was adding that little circular fade out. You can imagine that you could change that to a diamond, you could change it to a star, you could change it to the shape of this fellow right here. I mean, actually, that would actually be pretty cool. Um, just take his outline and then scale it up. Anyway, all sorts of really fun things you could do with that. And with that, I leave you, my dear friends, and until next time, goodbye.